too crowded here. Uh, we're suffering some, or suffering and suffering, <laughs> really, really hot weather. So let's see if I can pull through this video. Uh, yeah, Commodore Army uh, technical documentation. Uh, does it exist? And if it exists, what's available? Where can you find it? And a little bit of an overview of what, what the content is. So let's get into it. So anyway, I'll put the um, links to where you can find all the documentation in the, in the comments. And the first one we'll just have a brief look at is the Amiga hardware reference man. And um, this one is the third edition, so they've actually had prior editions. So what I, when I was looking for documentation, I think this is the latest, as far as I can tell. And the, and the last one that was um, was published prior to um, Commodore going bust. So it should be relatively. Uh, it, it actually does um, talk about the Amiga 3000. So that, that, from that perspective, it seems to be at least covering now. <laughs> 500 and you know the, the Amiga 1000, 500 and 2000 minutes, uh, pretty much up to date. Just look at the contents. So let's see what kind of content this has on a brief basis. Um, you know, the introduction and it covers the coprocessor hardware. And then, of course, you get into these various Amiga-specific uh, definitions, like Playfield hardware, uh, Sprite hardware. So that's the graphics handling uh, in the hardware. So this was this is an Amiga. You have to think of it's like a er early phase, like computer graphics cards merger, uh, and even a sound card merger. So it's like everything in. in on the same platform, so not modularized like we have it now. If you have a conventional PC, then you, you have a, you have the motherboard, and then you okay, you have a, usually just a chip on the on the board now for audio. But they used to have a sound card you slotted in, so that was a separate unit. And, and then on the PCs, you migrated towards having graphics on a separate card and a separate implementation. <laughs> Omega, everything's like together. Uh, yeah, so then it covers the audio hardware, um, Blitter hardware, which is moving stuff around, memory, system control hardware, interface hardware, so relatively um, integrated, complicated package. But everything is, is described here, so you can get down to really, really um, quite a high level of detail. So let's see if we take an example. So here for it, and th this I just like to reflect PC versus Amiga uh, at the point in time that the Amiga existed. But um, when you had um, slots in the Amiga the 2000, uh, and even to a certain extent, uh, yeah, or under 3000 also, they had they already at this point in time had an AL config system where when you um, put in an extension card and you booted up the system then it would automatically configure you know the interrupts and memory ranges and, uh, and everything related to that and, and the PCs didn't have that at this point in time so, <laughs> mm. so you know the, the Amiga actually had quite a lot of um, technically very advanced features but um, you know and the PC was very rudimentary from, the, from that perspective. And, uh, but this is actually very interesting to see the, the technically best solution. It's not guaranteed that the technically best solution will you know, win out. So in this case Commodore died and the PCs took over the world. So, uh, uh, yeah. so just as a reflection on that. But it was interesting that already in, in those days they had an autocomplic me mechanism. So still missing, or was missing from the PC world at that point in time. So, the next um, reference manual to look at is the Amiga ROM kernel. 
And this is the the, uh, the collection of information regarding the um, device handler. This is also the third edition, and as you, yeah, I didn't mention this. Well, this is a, uh, I probably didn't emphasize enough. This is Commodore um, Company original material. Um, let's have a look at the contents. So this covers from the kernel perspective what kind of devices. Um, System supports, and this is from more from a low low level from software um, perspective. What um, different devices that are supported look like? So they have the audio device, clipboard device, console device, game port device, input device, keyboard, narrator, parallel port, printer, SCSI, <laughs> serial timer. <laughs> you know, track. So everything to do with hardware handling goes through the kernel and then kernel has different sections to handle different types of devices. So I thought we'd actually look at um, one specific one that actually has a kind of cool name. So over well, here it was. <coughs> so this is like you know, chapter 5 in, in game port device. So this describes the um, you know, mouse um, joystick connectors. And and as you see that it starts like he, here is a good like hint of what this documentation kind of covers so as you see it starts from the Omega 500 and ends up with the Omega 3000 so uh, pretty much all the different variants of uh, of the Omega hardware and um, so this goes actually into the kernel commands of how you interface with the different devices connected to those ports the software header definitions and how do you do different actions with the with the hardware device in question. So, and this this repeats of course itself with every single hardware category. So, so a, a very good base material to have. Yeah, and then we have the Omega ROM kernel again. So but this covers libraries, what types of libraries you have. Third edition, original Omega Commodore from the Omega Corporation itself. And here we have the content. So um, here it describes the, the different um, library elements of what software libraries you have in, in the. In the Definition of the Omega kernels. So, you know, something called intuition and then you know, the executable. And so you get the kind of an architectural understanding of it from a software perspective how, how the system's divided up and what, what parts of the system does what. You know, so, for example, the intuition handles Windows and you, know, you get this kind of conceptual idea. Each system has kind of its own. Uh, but one of these is kind of cool. Boopsy, object oriented into it. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, the every system is broken down into basically in those days they were into object orientation. So, um, so the, this gives you the understanding of how the different parts of the elements of the user interface are. Um, made available through different types of objects. And I just thought it was cool with that one. Oops, in there. <laughs> uh, here you see how it's like, like the breakdown of the object diagram. So, what actually reflects into this screen. And, uh, so you get this kind of architectural hierarchy for handling the different types of information in the kernel. Very useful. 
So, and um, we're going to actually do programming, and when it comes to the Amiga, then you can program in assembler or C on the lower level. They also have other, very many other programming languages of it. But um, basically, when it comes to the ROM kernel programming, then you have um, lots of include files. And then Autodocs was the concept. There are concepts for on, like online documentation um, for programming. And let's have a look at. It's a little bit more sparse information. <coughs> but there, when you, if you're wandering around uh, programming in Amiga, then you, you, you very often uh, come up against this reference to includes in Autodocs. So here we have the um, uh, content information, so it gives you the overview of the library, device summary. So, so this is like more like getting closer to programming you know, like on a practical level. So you have the reference material and then you have this. And then as you say when I was talking about the include files, so here they have a whole bunch of include files to do C programming. And then you have the same for assembly programming. This is this you don't really get involved in very well in modern programming. You don't realize that assembly language programming actually has its own set of include files. But in the in those days it was very common, and even to mix the two was very common. And then uh, libraries, and then it gives you like samples and reference charts and. And then one detail would be interesting to look at. Uh, it's this one. So, um, interchange file format and um, those that have been dealing with Windows for a very long time, you have the OLE system originally called where you can actually, the idea was that you can take, you can create something in one program and then you can copy, like copy paste it into another application, or make your, you know, reuse of like sound and other types of material, distribute it through different applications, you know, live or through, through the file system. So actually, and again, the Commodore was ahead of its time. Well, actually, this, in all fairness, this was not originally or uh, totally produced by a Commodore company. There was other other companies involved in, in defining this file, file format. But they actually did have tried to do an OLED style standardization um, for different types of um, media content. <sighs> it's like, uh, here we have an Amiga continuous bit now, and it's all, um, they even had it for animation and, war, and then they had sort of like word processing subsections. So that was, again, a little bit ahead of its time. Uh, and then again, another example where Commodore Amiga was ahead of its, I would argue, ahead of its time in certain technical aspects, but then still, what ultimately killed it was the economics. <laughs> partially their technology. Um, yeah, so that, that kind of covers. So you spend, as an active programmer, uh, you spend a lot of time with this, this material. So, you know, the, the concept is that you, you already know the basics from the reference, and then you come in here and you're looking for the actual more nitty-gritty details of what you need to include in your program. And then we have the Amiga user interface style guide, so let's have a look at this one. So let me see the reference to the Commodore itself. So this basically gives you a description of the, uh, basically the artifacts of the user interface. Um, let's see. Uh, 
I was like very common in those days. There was a little bit mixed. Uh, the, the, you know, win windowing and window art artifacts and stuff were very you know, like yeah. There was lots of competing different ways of doing things. So this this document attempts to like explain how you should do this on the um, Commodore platform to be more consistent. And this this was the attempted also by. Um, Several other companies did the same, trying to push their own, own UI models interaction. So, for example, here in Chapter 4, you have Windows and Requesters, and Requesters are message boxes. <laughs> so, you're gonna have this terminology clashes also. So, you know, Requesters, what? Uh, oh, message boxes. Okay, now I understand. Uh, so yeah. uh, but, I mean, this, this manual doesn't really, as far as I can see, doesn't go really much into programming, uh, like how you actually program this stuff. It more like goes into the you know, what, what are the visual elements and um, the main visual elements and how, how should they um, be set up and, and, and used. But from a more like a high level, high level viewpoint. So um, if you're like, actually interested, like how do you create a window or a request or something, then that's in, in, in the other documentation. A little bit on the side, I found this. Um, they also published Amiga Developer um, the, uh, CDs, developer kits, whatever. So, uh, for example, um, if you look at um, here, you have the um, different versions of the development kits for Amiga with all the different files. And the documentation example includes tools, tutorials, and stuff. And something else. So I won't go into the detail, but the, the, this the CD, uh, and I've included as a reference so you can actually pick it up. And as you see, you can have the 1996. Okay. This, this CD is full packed with small little snippets of information <laughs> divided up into the different section it even even has email traffic you know related to the development on the Amiga from that from those days. So um, kind of an interesting technical archive. And um, this actually this this readme file actually just talks about the one of the um, key main problems that um, Commodore had in those days. It was the fact that they, as you saw, they had a very extensive hardware platform, integrated hardware platform with everything integrated into one big blob. And then they had software to uh, the kernel level and to support it uh, with a software layer. And then they had the developer community uh, in those days, or the companies making that were, were ah, they weren't really following the instructions. Um, and this meant that they they had a you know Motorola 68000 and a chipset based architecture, and um, they actually found out that they need to move you know, for costs, and, and that's where the Amiga 3000 came in. And then the, uh, like the in those days, it was hype to move from Motorola 68000 to PowerPC technology, yeah. and, and then they found that they had a huge Amiga had a huge problem with this fact that. Lots of developers had used direct hardware access and, and just totally ignoring all the API definitions and stuff. So when they would want to like um, take the architecture apart and migrate um, to a to a new new platform, and then and and then the fact that in those days it was also um, you you had the problem you couldn't like force all the developers and end users to like just say oh we scrapped the old. old Overall, move to the new because there was a lot of competition of what is the next new platform. So, you know, PCs were starting to come into the picture, and you know, the cost formula for migrating to a completely new Amiga platform with completely new software that was incompatible with the past. Um, you know, the, yeah, so, but the, the, this kind of article or, or this README file is very indicative of the um, architectural issues they were they were crashing into and, and how the world was evolving so sadly when they built the Amiga they kind of built themselves into a corner and, um, 
there was no financial means to take uh, take them out of that corner because you know everybody knows the building uh, nobody in the PC world let's put the architecture in that no, nobody no single entity makes everything that the PC contains nowadays no. and it was the, the trend was already starting in those days where the, you know, the sound was separated the definitely when it comes to video processing that, that was separated into a t totally different entity, some business chains, supply chains, and, and so um, it was great when it started, but then um, the architect, the hardware architecture and the software architecture oh, they had really big problems with it coming up into the, these times, and then the things that then Commodore also ran out of money, so you know, they did lots of different very bad business technical decisions. And, Basically, they didn't have the um, financial capability to dig themselves out of the hole they put themselves in under that competitive environment that they existed in. But, yeah, but um, an interesting read, you know, as a reflection of history before it all came crashing down. <laughs> So, but I think we can be thankful that um, Commodore Incorporated um, actually thought it was viable to produce some documentation. So, for those that are more into like the, um, I don't know why we do this, but um, you know, one has a historical, it's it's part of um, computing here. Amiga, or Commodore and Amiga are part of computing history, and you know, you, you can, um, yeah, there's many ways you can. You can take it. I mean, you can you can decide only to stay with the more, with the latest stuff like PC technology and stuff, you know? or you can uh, be a multi-platform. Uh, some people collect different computing equipment from very many different ages, or you can just um, like I a little bit I do, kind of building a small little Commodore collection, and then um, like to sort of invest a little bit more into uh, even the specifics of programming uh, on the. Uh, Amiga platform, and I mean it's not completely dead. I mean, you can, the Amiga you can run very like I demonstrated in one of my videos that you, it's it's supported uh, on an emulation basis, so you actually don't even need the hardware anymore to run run the Amiga software uh, on, on all levels. And, um, uh, and if you're really into it, then you can actually buy some <laughs> crap hardware and fix it up for yourself. But, um, yeah, hope you found this useful. I um, wondered myself if there was any kind of documentation still hanging around, but it seems like there is. And as I said, I'll put the links in the comments, and um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>